Hello everyone, I'm Ben, and I'm CEO and founder of Superblog in Korea. And today I will present Itano's efficient bootstrapping for floats on the Coinbase blockchain. Uh, this talk is about my paper published at Eurostis 2021 last year. And uh, Eurostis is an uh, academic conference in the field of computer science. And Superblock is implementing a mainnet based on this idea. As the blockchain becomes popular, the number of accounts has exploded, so, which is uh, more than 180 million as of February 2022. And also, the storage size and synchronization time has increased more than 530 gigabytes and takes more than half a day to synchronize to a full node. If you want to, uh, be, want to run an archive node, it exceeds, uh, exceeds more than uh, 9 terabytes and it takes more than one, one week, so it is very uh, big burden to run a node. As a result, Ordinary people cannot operate a full node by themselves, so they have no choice but to rely on full node services like Infra or Alchemy. And service providers also have to, have to cover the cost of running a full node by paying for a full node service, services or running their own nodes. That cost will be passed on to users in the form of commissions, which, which increases the transaction fees. So before we talk about Ethanos, let's review Ethereum to learn some backgrounds. Ethereum stores each account into the state tree, of which structure is Mercurpetusha tree, or MPT, and the character sequence of account address determines the path to its account data. Each node is labeled with a hash value. And this MPT is stored by LevelDB, and each node is stored with this hash as a key. Accessing an account requires multiple hash-based LevelDB accesses, which is the main bottleneck for synchronization. And MPT also allows efficient verification, and there are two proofs. One is Merkle proof, and one is void proof. Merkle proof, uh, provides a proof that, uh, can, that proves an account exists in the state trial. For example, an, an account 0x7a1cdf uh, could be proved by uh, the nodes like branch node 0, extension node 0, branch node 1, and extension node 1, and the account. We can serialize these nodes, and this proof can prove that this account is, is in this workup, in this state trial. And also we can prove that an account is not in this workup, in this uh, MPT by uh, using the void proof. For example, if we want to prove that an account 0x7a14a0 is not in this state trial, we can use branch node 0, extension node 0, and branch node 1 because there is no past four. And we can make a void proof by serializing those, those nodes in the path. Uh, if a new node wants to, be, wants to join the network, it has to synchronize uh, the current block state. There are two uh, synchronization processes. One is archive sync and one is fast sync. And there is a snap, snap sync in the latest case, but it is similar to fast sync, so I will uh, explain for these two processes. Uh, archive sync downloads all blocks and replays all the transactions from the Genesis block to the current block and to reproduce the current state of the current block. Uh, archive sync uh, stores all the histories of the blockchain, so it, it, it requires large space and a long time. So FastSync 
uh, has been proposed. And first thing downloads all the blocks with the, but it also downloads the state of the pivot block and it replaces the transactions only from the pivot block to the current block to uh, reduce the synchronization time. And it, uh, yeah, time and it significantly reduced the storage size and synchronization time, but it is still slow because we need to traverse, transmit, and rebuild only every node of the huge state try, which suffers from the intensive disk IOs. So uh, we want to optimize the storage size and synchronization time, so we investigated Ethereum, and we found that most accounts are dormant, and only a fraction of accounts are active. 3% are active for one week, and 5% are active for one month. And we also found that active accounts tend to be activated sooner again. An account is updated in a week with a probability of 76%, and an account is updated in a month with a probability of 89%. So we propose an idea to reduce storage size uh, storage size and synchronization time by sweeping the dormant account periodically. Let's create a lightweight node with, uh, with only the active accounts. Uh, Eternals sweeps dormant accounts periodically by an epoch lambda. For example, lambda could be 40,320 blocks for one week period. Simply uh, and Eternal simply creates an empty try every time a new, new epoch starts. And yeah, because uh, uh, yeah, yeah, because it is very uh, very is, is, it is extremely expensive to traverse the state try to find the dormant account and remove them. And Eternal caches the last checkpoint of each epoch. And Eternals fills a new uh, yeah, fills a new try only with the active accounts used by the transactions in, transactions in the new epoch. The reason that Eternals caches the last checkpoint is that the new try has no state, so we have to copy the data of the last state of the accounts. This is the sweep mechanism of uh, the, the Eternals. Uh, if an account is in the current try, just use it. But if an account is not in the current try, but in the cached try, copy it to the current try to update the current try. If an account is not in, the, in both trays, uh, two, case, two cases could, could occur. If it is on sender, it is an invalid transaction because it, because it has no, no state. If it is a receiver, create a claim create a Chrome account as if a new account is created. Uh, this, Chrome this Chrome account is different from the dormant account because the, those states are different, but it is the mechanism of Ethereum that creates, creates an account, so we have to uh, cover the Chrome account. And we prune the dormant, dormant accounts, and if a user wants to restore the dormant accounts, we have to uh, provide the provide the restoration process. And the the user of dormant account has to transmit a restore transaction. Restore transactions retor, restores the last active state of an account by merging its current states, but there could be some cheatings. So to avoid the cheatings, a restore transaction includes a sequence of worker proofs and void proofs, which will be verified by miners. And uh, these proofs, if these worker proofs also prove that, uh, also includes the last state of the dormant account, and also prove that that account was really exist in the uh, last in the last block. And we use the restored, restored fact because uh, we cannot uh, distinguish ground state from the uh, restored state. So we use this fact uh, 
to prevent an already restored account from behaving as if it is a Chrome account. So a value state generated by a resource transaction can be expressed during a regular expression like this. And if a proof sequence of resource transaction does not follow this regular expression, it will be rejected. Therefore, an attacker has no choice but to follow the regular expression, but it only generates a correct, a correct state. And Ethanos uh, also uh, provides some other sync mode named compact sync. Ethanos downloads state tries of both pivot and the latest checkpoint blocks, and Ethanos reduces the size of state try so the two the, two, the size of two state try is very small, which is about 220 megabytes through, uh, through the, our experiment for an epoch one week. And we also eliminate the old transactions because if we reduce the state try size, then the size of, old, size of transactions becomes bigger, so we reduce them by uh, omitting downloading, old, downloading old transactions before the pivot block. So we can significantly reduce the storage size and synchronization time. Uh, <coughs> through the experiment, we found that we can reduce the size less than one gigabyte, and we, can, we could reduce the bootstrapping time uh, for a few, few, minu few minutes. So we think that this is preserved for ordinary people. This is the experiment setup. We evaluated with real Ethereum data, uh, and we evaluated, evaluated 300,000 blocks of Ethereum from 7 million to 7.3 million blocks. And there are 30.6 million transactions updated, 4.6 million accounts for two months in early 2019. There exists about 1 million active accounts occupying 23.5% at the 300,000 block. And we instrumented CAS client version 1.9 to implement Ethanos and compared it with the original CAS. We set the epoch, we set the epoch size to 40,320 uh, blocks, which is about one week. And there exist about 200,000 resource transactions. And the specifications of host and clients are as written here. And the network environment was the internet. This is the experimental result. The total storage size for a compact sync of CAS was about one gigabyte, and Eternos was about uh, 40 megabytes. And uh, the size of state try was about 833 megabytes for gas and 200, 220 megabytes for Ethanos. And we found that the size of Ethanos, uh, Ethanos is almost constant as time flows. And the total storage size of Ethanos is uh, under 600 megabytes, it, including the compact stick node and cache try. And we think 600 megabyte is reasonable for ordinary people to run a full node. We also measure the synchronization time. And we found that Ethanos is uh, always better than the cast fast sync. And the compact sync keeps synchroniz synchronization time constant around 100 seconds. So we conclude that if we apply the Ethanos, we can, uh, we can limit or we can uh, expect that Ethan the synchronization, synchronization time of Ethanos will be uh, very small and constant. So uh, Superblock is a company that I found and we are making a mainnet based on this idea and we are building the next, genera next generation web 3 platform. We think we, think we can uh, make two key features. One is cross-chain hub, and one is autonomous apps. For the cross-chain hub, validators can operate additional lightweight nodes without burden 
for cross-chain communication because the size of Eternos, very, Eternos is very small, so the validator has no burden to run the nodes. So we think that this could be a key feature to cross-chain hub. And the other is the autonomous app because everyone runs their own node. So autonomous application could, can be implemented by uh, integrating a front-end interface into a smart contract, and it could be run by, ordinary, run by ordinary people, so we can eliminate the middlewares like full node services, and people can run the autonomous app on their own computers. Yeah, that's it, and thank you. <laughs>